Hey everybody, Jen Hatmaker here, your host of the For the Love podcast, aka our favorite little community corner on the internet. We love it here. We love you. Welcome to the show. Oh man, <laughs> I'm tickled. I'm tickled because I know what the reaction is going to be because we have a real special episode for you. And we sort of gate kept this episode um, for our premium podcast listeners the first time it aired. But it was truly so good. <laughs> we needed the whole community to have access to this particular conversation. And serendipitously, with it being Pride Month, it fits right in with the phenomenal group of folks that we're already talking to during our Queer Future series. So <laughs> here's the sitch. I have a feeling a certain little fitness community is going to lose it when they realize who our guest is today. It is the one and the only and the fabulous Cody Rigsby from Peloton. You know it. <laughs> Look, okay. If you're not familiar with Peloton, first of all, it's a force. Like there's no other way to put it. It is a, this fiercely like loyal crew, people who just go nuts about their community in the best way possible. You know, I love to see it. They're all just doing really like positive work on their personal wellness journeys. It's so fun to watch. Like think Jen Hatmaker book club gals level of closeness, but like on mega steroids, right? People are loving this workout from home phenomenon for good reason. They are a hundred percent loving the instructors, namely Cody. Um, they're all invested in their lives because when you have someone motivating you to love yourself, no matter what, um, to be proud of yourself, to like honor your own journey, saying the exact things you need to hear to feel empowered and feel like your best self, why wouldn't you love them? So we interviewed Cody last year, right as he was releasing his incredible memoir called XOXO Cody which is also, by the way, the name of his super popular Peloton bike riding series, where essentially, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a workout plus gossip girl, like spilling the tea sesh with your BFF all at once. You're going to get a kick out of the subtitle of his memoir, by the way, um, which is an opinionated homosexuals guide to self-love relationships and tactful pettiness. <laughs> God, I love it so much. Um, I, I want Cody to tell me how to live my whole life. That's just the bottom line. So of course he has blown up to celebrity status because the people L O V E his larger than life personality. So if you aren't already familiar with Cody or his numerous mainstream brand partnerships, you might've seen him fighting for the mirror ball trophy on dancing with the stars. Um, so in this really fun interview, he talks about his own personal story, which I appreciated his candor so much because, spoiler, it was not all sunshine and roses, no matter how he seems right now, and how he transitioned from professional dance to the world of fitness. Um, he also opened up about his relationship with his mom, who has faced addiction and a bipolar disorder, and then their beautiful journey toward healing together is really lovely. And I just fell a little bit more in love with him than I already was. So without any further ado, the dazzling and delightful Cody Rigby. Cody Rigsby, welcome. I'm so excited to meet you. I have just, I just love you. Is that too um, aggressive? Is that no, too aggressive an opener? Uh, you know, I, not to sound like a narcissist or like full of myself, but a lot of strangers come up to me and say that. So I, I kind of am used to it, you know, <laughs> and it, it's nothing but love. And I, I, I get it. We share a special bond of endorphins and sweating and storytelling yeah. and being vulnerable and laughing. So I yeah. get it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, there's some like common threads in there that we've all kind of been starving for the last handful of years, for sure. Um, if mm -hmm. not forever. So anyway, you're so fun. I'm so excited to see your like meteoric success. I just, you know, yeah. when, when you're happy to see someone succeed and then other times you're like, God, I hate that guy. Like I wish failure upon him. You're the opposite of that. 
<laughs> that's good. That's good. You know, but you know, after a while, the wolves get hungry and they don't want to see you succeed. So, oh uh, god, isn't let them go. weird? No, bye. We, I say, we bless and release. Um, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Go, go where your people are. Um, okay. So, just in case there's a handful of people in my community who aren't familiar with you, let's just do a hypothetical. Um, will you just do like sort of the high arc? The high yeah. arc from I went from. I'm growing up gay and poor in the uh -huh. South, and now I'm a dancer in New York City. I yes. mean, you've got you've had a deal. Yes, um, I am. I'm a big Marvel fan, so I always call this question the origin story or the first Perfect. movie. Um, you know, at this, at this at this point, I like to make this not a movie, but maybe ten minutes of the movie. So you right. know, we've called it a bunch of times, but I'm happy to give it. Um, yeah. So I was born in Los Angeles, California. Um, my my mom was a single parent. My father died when I was very young of a drug a drug overdose. Um, at eight years old, we packed all of our things with um, our cats and our dogs and got in a Chrysler and drove across the country to North Carolina, where I was raised from eight to twenty two. I'm so grateful that I, you know, grew up there. Things were a little bit more simpler, but they were also a little bit more challenging for someone sure. who grew up gay in a very like conservative space and trying totally. to figure out who they were. Um, I studied acting at first, but then I was really shit at that. So then I went and did um, consumer apparel and retail studies in college, which is just a very complicated way of saying fashion merchandising. Sure. Love it. Um, moved to New York City at 22 in 2009, I just yeah. celebrated 14 years in New York City. I can't wow. believe it. Wow. I know. That's um, a long, you're a long timer at this I know. Point. I love it. I know. Yeah. I love it. I think I'm here forever, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, moved here, started working at a startup company that did streetwear. It was owned by a choreographer that I had studied under because mm -hmm. while I was in college, I spent a lot of the summers here in New York um studying commercial dance which is like stuff you would see in a video or tv or sure. whatever so i worked for them and then that lasted about eight months i was mm -hmm. like unemployed at the height of kind of the recession where i was like living on food stamps and oh, yeah. unemployment and just trying to make my way in new york city but i really mm -hmm. use that as a blessing to really pursue dance full time so mm -hmm. i danced um here in New York City as a commercial dancer for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of dancing for people like Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. um, but at a certain point, I kind of got to a point where I was like, hey, this is not doing anything for me. I'm not mm -hmm. building my own brand. I'm not building my own life. I'm kind of mm -hmm. doing things in service to lift uh, a, an yeah. artist up or a, a company up. And I had no idea what my next step was, but I kind of threw it out into the universe. I was like, hey, universe, I'm ready for something new. And so I just like focused on waiting tables and bartending and yeah. working odd end jobs just to make money. And then the club that I was working at in New York City called The Box, um, there was a, a burlesque show there and I was a, they knew I was a dancer. And the choreographer of that show had a connection to Peloton through college, I believe. Yeah. Like, hey, my friends uh, working for the startup, they're looking for performers that are into fitness. I had kind of gotten into fitness through my dance career because, you know, you got to look hot to book jobs of and all this yeah. stuff. And so then kind of Peloton fell into my lap. I didn't Gosh. know what I was doing. I never taught a fitness class, but I had a beautiful and bubbly personality that uh -huh. I knew I could use. Uh -huh. And a cute face that gets you, yeah. that gets you more a lot of time. Um and now I've been at Peloton for over nine years. God. Yeah. it's And I still love it. And I still think it's amazing. You do? Like, yeah. I, I still like, you know, of course, there's some days I don't want to teach or I'm like not in the mood. But majority of the time, 80, 90 percent of the time, I'm yeah. so grateful that I get to do something that has purpose, that yeah. makes people feel better, that I get to have fun at. Um and it's been such a whirlwind, you know, we, we worked hard for five or six years. Yeah. Obviously we didn't know the pandemic was going to happen. Of course. The pandemic happened that shot Peloton into a household name. A lot totally. of these, including myself kind of got this m huge success out of it. And so yeah. now here we are three years out of the pandemic. I've been on dancing with the stars. Yeah. I'm writing, I'm releasing a book September yeah. 12th. So XO Cody, um, and I look back and I'm just like, wow, what yeah. happened? How did I get here? Oh my God. It's, um, 
your story arc is pretty profound and it's um, it's been kind of amazing to watch and of course the pandemic was that was the moment that you became it somebody that we just kind of all heard of and knew at that point and I am curious how that felt because moving into that season obviously Peloton is a thing and there's a whole community around it and there was before the pandemic but yeah. this is, it, it went stratospheric at yeah. that point. And so I am wondering how it felt to you to all of a sudden really have lost your anonymity. If you even had it to begin with, I'm not even sure. But now at this point, you cannot walk around. Like, uh, is you are in a different category. Like, was it exciting? Was it overwhelming? Was there a downside? Uh, that's a, okay. So let, let's approach this a little bit. Like, before the pandemic, yeah, I'd get noticed once in a while, and it's it's fine. Yeah. Um, Peloton kind of really grew, and but it was in a bubble. Like we were growing, but remember, at the time of its growth, we were still inside. Like we weren't traveling of course. anywhere. So that's true. It was all kind of growing online, and it wasn't until you know vaccines came out, we were back in the world, and I started to like feel that you know going into Soho and being stopped and all these sort of things and um, being recognized. And it, of course, at first it's very exciting, you know, as someone who's been a dancer who wanted to be an actor, I think there's always been this taste for quote unquote fame or notoriety. Mm -hmm. So I think it's been something that in, I don't know if it sounds weird to say, but I've like wanted to achieve. And now, now, now here we are. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time I know how to manage it and handle it and it's fine. And everybody that wants to say hi or share their story, it all comes from a place of love. It all comes from a place of gratitude. And it's really beautiful to hear people's stories and know that you've had a really positive impact on them. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at, at some points, like on bad days when you just don't have it, like think of those days that you don't want to go to work. You don't want to talk to coworkers. You don't want to do anything. You have to just yeah. like yeah, go and it's part of the job. You have to accept it. And I always want to just like lead with kindness, but um, you know, sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it and yeah. just how it is. And I, I'm okay with that. But the, mm. thing, the thing about my fame or Peloton fame is it's very, this is a good and a bad, like I'm not Brad Pitt. Like I can walk through the streets of New York and not get stopped constantly. You know, I can yeah. live my life and it's not a big deal. But at the same time, I think, because we're so approachable and because we are yeah. people feel like they really know us. And that's that, the brand. Yeah. Yeah. That's the brand. And so people gravitate towards us a little bit more. So it's like, you know, I don't walk through every place with security and like have sure. that, but at the same time, people are super where people really want to approach us and um, share their story. So it's, it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's um, challenging sometimes on those hard days to like, want to just like escape and, and, mm -hmm forget that this is part of the job. And I don't know, that's kind of it. How'd you, um, because you, you started Peloton having, like you said, never taught fitness. That just wasn't, that wasn't your exact roles. It was Jason, obviously. Yeah. You obviously had like body movement in your blood, yeah. but how did you, um, cause cycling, cycling, what do you say? Is that what you say? Yeah. It, 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 well, here's the thing. Like spin is a, is a uh -huh. registered, Mark, so we can't use that oh. at home, but oh. indoor thing is not, you know, things that you learn okay. in the, in the world, but okay. yeah, so cycling is fine. Okay. It's such a specific form of exercise. And at this point craft, I mean, it is, it has, you, you've created a whole thing that didn't exist before really. Like, yeah. um, how did you like this? Would, this would obviously go back to your earlier days, but first of all, how did you, I even get that job because you're like I don't know I don't know how to uh, whatever I, I've never done this and then how did you develop your own deal like your own brand yeah, of it yeah, your yeah, own version yeah. of it yeah yeah um so I honestly believe sometimes success is a lot of luck being yeah, at, the right, at the right time yes. knowing the right person and that's almost like unfortunate because sometimes yeah or how much we want something, if we're not at the right yeah. place at the right time, it's not going to happen for us. You're right. You know? um, so fortunately, I was just at the right place at the right time. Mm. 
And I didn't really have the skills to say, I have the authority to teach this. Sure. Yeah. But I knew that I had skills to figure it the fuck out Mm -hmm. and to charm the right people into believing in me and giving me the opportunity. So it's not like I showed up and they were like, okay, you teach tomorrow. Yeah. It's, you know, let's meet. You have things that you could, that would be beneficial to this. I know music. I know how to be in front of a camera. Um, I know how to interact with people. I know how to be fun, all these sort of things. So I took all this that I did have with the chance and opportunity that someone gave me and just dove head first into it and Mm. figured it out and failed a lot. And, and that's where I kind of like got into the job. Yeah. Um, and then once I got into the space, you know, I, I'll, I'll purchase a three pronged place. Okay. I really just tried to follow what some of my colleagues were doing, like Robin sure. and Jess King and just like, okay, what are they doing? And in all honesty, that was not me. Like they're, yeah. they're their own person. They're their own lane. Yeah. They're their own like authority. And so it wasn't really um, genuine what I was Mm -hmm. trying to do at first. I'd say for the first probably like two to four years, I was like, I'm just kind of copying. Yeah. Um, So that was that. And then also I've kind of observed other brands and other Mm -hmm. spaces and they feel really like fake and forced and what wooey, you know, like Mm -hmm. that wooey. Energy. It's not for me. Like yeah. if it's for you, it's for you. It's not for yeah. me. And I think there was a demand in the fitness space for like authenticity, for keeping it real, for being raunchy and stupid and silly. And I think that that is who I am. Like, yeah. you know, I always say that uh, uh, I'm a hoe and being a hoe is a lifestyle. <laughs> and I... Right. I'm silly. I love to be, you know, yeah. make fun of myself and other things and not take life so seriously. And so I kind of took that approach to fitness, which is always taken as like kind of super serious, like totally, you know, you got to be so inspirational and you have, yes. to have and you have to be such a great body and all this sort of stuff. And I was just like, guys, let's chill out. Let's laugh. That's right. and like, it's exercise some, guys. Some stupidity into it. Yeah. And I think that's what people really gravitated towards was like, yeah. oh, like we can make fitness not so serious and fun. Totally. Um, and on top of that, I think that was really what helped me find my purpose within the fitness space mm. is that I think the biggest obstacle to someone starting a fitness journey is it feeling intimidating. You don't know what you're doing. Of course. Um, you don't look like the people that are at the gym. God, yes. Um, your body doesn't know what it's doing, so it's super overwhelming. So if we can take take that and yeah. push it all to the side and just be like, okay, what in this space can I have fun? Okay, here's this yeah. silly queen acting a fool on this bike, yeah. and like we're just jamming out to great music and doing the best that we can. Okay, I can do that. You know? Yeah, you're so right. I it's not a mystery why people are drawn to you, and it's uh, uh, that list of things that you just said are those are such barriers, such deterrents, especially when you come into a community like Peloton, which is so baked in, like it's a community. There's language inside of it that everybody knows. Like there's some, some rules and some systems and some procedures that everybody knows. And then there's technique. And so it's like, shit, Uh, you know, how, where does a new person fit in? And so you taking the gravitas out of it, yeah. And just being like, guys, we're not carrying cancer. Everybody just get on the nah, bike. Like this is just, nah. this is fun. Like this is, there's no such thing like as a indoor cycling emergency. Just get on the bike. Let's go. Is a relief and a yeah. great front door, which you obviously have seen. I wonder, you use your story a lot in your classes. Mm. Um, mm. You, you talk while you are so fun and so outrageous. Mm. Um, and that. You also um, weave in like what you've learned in life yeah. um, throughout your instruction and at certain parts of your of your routines and workouts. And so, uh, would you be willing to talk a little bit about losing your dad to addiction? Because this is a part of your story that you 
include losing your dad to addiction and then really even the the work that you've done to repair your relationship with your mom this is just so uh, relatable like this is so relatable this is why people love you um Mm -hmm. on a deeper level than just having a good time um so i wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and then when you decided that you were going to give yourself permission to use your own story in the way that you do yeah um it's it's interesting because I you know writing my book um you die I dove into this in such a more detail into and it like really unearthed itself through the process of writing my book um and so it's kind of very fresh on my on my mind yeah. this this you know um when it comes to my dad my dad passed when I was not even a year old so mm-hmm. I I hadn't even been on this earth a year. So I never yeah. knew him. I didn't have a connection to him. Um, and I know it sounds brash, but it, it it didn't really necessarily affect me in this way that, oh, I lost this person because you, yeah, can't you never knew him. Yeah. Never had. I think growing up, it was an obstacle or something that I had to get over because you see these nuclear families, you grow up in the South, um, people are curious also people like kids use that as ammunition to get at you and hurt you and all these sort of things and so I think that I I accepted that this wasn't someone I had a connection to so that was like gone and then I think that I just had to accept that you know I came from a different family a single parent family and then that was okay and I kind of learned to love that Mm -hmm. um when it comes to when it comes to like my relationship with my mom I think it's complicated because she also she also dealt with addiction and I think that was very like prominent in our life like it just it it popped up in ugly places and and Mm. I had to deal with that a lot Mm. um and I think it forced me because of her shortcomings to be an adult much sooner in life than I necessarily wanted to be or necessarily Mm -hmm. ready. So it's like, you know, being evicted from homes at a very young Mm -hmm. age and middle school and high school, not knowing where rent is going to come from. um, Just having those insecurities in life really, even though they were challenging and traumatizing, you know, Mm -hmm. really forced me to grow up quick. And that meant like, going to McDonald's on my 16th birthday and being like, give me a job so I can, so I can buy me and my mom a car and like have financial independence and all this sort of stuff. Really, it really forced me to develop a work ethic and push myself and really become a go-getter. So it's like, you know, through this tragedy and through like a really difficult thing, I can see the benefits and like what came out of it. Sure. Now, Hmm. that doesn't mean that many years later in my life, I still am not holding, haven't held on to like resentment or pain or trauma from all of this. Like no matter how much we love anybody in our life, specifically our parents, like dealing with addiction is just, it's hard. It's challenging. Totally. And and you don't really know the effects of it when you're a kid until Mm -hmm. you kind of look back as an adult and be like, oh, wow, that was really messed up. Absolutely. Um, So I think there was just like a lot of resentment there and Finally, probably like six or seven years ago, I started going to therapy post breakup because I was just like really going through it. And if you've ever been to therapy, oh you, God, have I? You you know that let's just say like eighty percent of everything that is messed up with you goes back to your childhood, goes back to your parents, goes back to to things that are just are so embedded in you. Yeah, that's young- right. And. I think I I learned to let that go, but more Mm. so through like radical acceptance to accept that my mom was doing the best that she could, Mm. accept that my mom, like accepting that that she did the best she could, she provided for me the best she could. And sometimes that just fell short. Yeah. Also accepting that if I want good memories and, um, nourishing experiences for the rest of the time that I have with my mom who is diabetic 
has mental health issues is about to turn 70 in a year. Mm. You know, if I want nourishing experiences, I got to let go of the resentment. I mm. have to accept where she is well, at, where yep. I'm at and step into it the best that I can. And so I mm. think for me, that just meant accepting that, like I am the adult in the situation that I will have to provide for her and I will have to take care of her. And so yeah. that meant for me like moving her to New York. She has an apartment like four blocks away from here, seeing yeah. her and taking care of her and just yeah. knowing that the time is precious and limited. And if I hold on to the resentment and I hold on to the what ifs and she should have done this and this is yeah. how it should be like, it's going to get me nowhere. That's right. Um, and so for me, it's just like that radical acceptance mm -hmm. and doing my best to heal myself and yep. invest in the best, like nourishing and uh, loving mm -hmm. experiences that I can have with, with, with a complicated relationship. That's lovely. I remember, um, when I was like deep in the throes of therapy, kind of near the beginning of the pandemic by way of just very short background, I was married for 26 years and then like lost my marriage in a blaze of glory um, at the July of 2020. So just like, not in a way that I saw coming, you know, not like, oh, we're slowly losing the thread. It was um, shocking off. And um, I remember my therapist teaching me, and God, therapists are so nosy, you know, and they just absolutely don't take any of your bullshit that they make you think about yourself. It's so frustrating. Yeah. I remember telling my therapist, like, I'm not paying you to be mean to me. Um, but she was like, the resistance is going to create so much more pain for you. If you, if you can't move into acceptance, she's like, it's the resisting of what was, why, how, mm -hmm. what should have been, what could have mm -hmm. been. She's like, you all that resistance is just going to delay your healing she's like once you can move into a place where you're like this is it just it is it's what it was it's what it is and moving to a different place of acceptance um was really for me the key that turned the lock to um right. that's an inside job like that has nothing to do Absolutely. with someone else being sorry or getting their shit together or mm -hmm fixing what they broke. Like it, it's literally not dependent on anybody else. That's like yeah. inside work, but it's hard, really well, hard. hard. And, um, and I still work on that in various aspects of my life. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not perfect, but I, yeah, I feel like, when you're, I feel like I've noticed this, that like when you're going through something like the Instagram algorithm or the TikTok rhythm that likes yeah. to feed in certain content. And it reminds kind of me weird. of like this, this picture where it was like, it's like this hand and it has a rope against it. And it's like, you know, bleeding because this person's holding on so much to this rope that's just pulling and pulling and pulling. And if you could just let go, the yeah. pain would kind of go away and you would start to heal. But yeah. we're so fixated on grasping right. and holding and like holding on to what was or what is. And it's, it's, it's true. We just crave justice so much. We just want to have been right no, and I've to have been proven that. right. You know, like there's just a, a justice inside of us that um, wants somebody to be sorry or to, or to admit or to be proven that we were right, but that that's not actually healing. And so no. That's going to be my takeaway from this interview is we, mm -hmm. we see, I've never heard that before. You, we seek justice too much. I, I needed to hear that today. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, absolutely. How did you find the writing process? Talk about flexing a different muscle. Like this is completely outside of your wheelhouse. Um, writing a book is a deal. I'm a writer. I know like it is, it's such a fun idea. And then you've got your book deal and then it's like, Oh, I got to write it. Like I, yeah. I have to write it now. Like it's, and it's labor. It is a lot of labor things yeah. like, yeah, I think you, when you're going through the process of like, oh, someone wants me to write a book. They want to pay me to do this. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then the labor comes and you're like, oh, wow, I got to like put yeah. pen and paper and organize this and yeah. edit it. And, and I'm very um, bad at those things. Let's just be mm. honest. You know? mm. So um, it's just definitely been laborsome and more than I thought, but also like just super rewarding. Yeah. Um, it, especially with, with my book, it's, um, it's a memoir, but it's also kind of like life advice and dating advice and all this sort of stuff. But I think the memoir aspect of it was 
going back in my own mind through my entire life and trying to remember all of these things. And it's so interesting how little details pop mm -hmm. up and you remember yeah. aspects of your life and you remember details that you totally forgot about. And mm -hmm. some of them are make you happy and allow you to remember where you came from. Um, I think when we've gotten just like in life, it gets so busy, we're wrapped up in work. We really forget what life used to be or the struggles that we had and yeah. the aspirations that we have. And then you, you sit there and think and you sit in the present and you have a moment of gratitude. Like, wow, I have a lot of the things that I always wanted. Yeah. Um, I've let go of so many of the things that were holding me back. Um, so it's, it was a really like beautiful process and, yeah. and just super um, spiritually rewarding yeah. And I'm, I'm excited for people to not only hear my story, just like with more depth, but also yeah. take away something that inspires them to not take life so seriously, yeah. to have more fun and know that like the hardship and the journey is, is, is like natural and normal. And mm -hmm. to laugh at yourself when you get a little too frustrated and overwhelmed by it all. Mm -hmm. I think there's a place for that. I do. I, I, it's interesting to be a, a lead a large community of women mm -hmm. and just to notice the erosion of, of fun I, for lack yeah. of a better word, like in yeah. the ethos in general, like God, everything is so serious. And some of life is, of course, yes. some of life yes. is yes. dead serious and yes and painful there is suffering like i don't that's is not like a diminish real mm -hmm. life but it feels like life right we're having to kind of fight for fun a little and fight yeah, for like, joy where 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 there are so many things that are there are a handful of things where life is very serious yeah we can allow it to and we can go to those places and get deep and go within and process it yeah but how much of our life are we taking way too seriously and letting yes. have an effect on us? Exactly. Drama with a coworker, drama with a, totally. with a partner, things your kids did, yes. politics. Like, yes, they're very scary, but like how much of that are we really allowing to overwhelm us and, you know, mm -hmm. all these sort of things. Like Also like our own BS, like, yeah we yeah. can get frustrated over and over with the same mistakes that we make, or we can laugh at ourselves and be like, Oh, Hey Cody, you're doing that thing again. Like, mm -hmm. let's laugh about it and let's move forward. Mm -hmm. I can't agree more. Um, there's just a lot of actual uh, living on the other side of that choice where we yeah. just go. I tell my community all the time, I can't care about everything. And I mean it, I cannot, I cannot care about everything. Good so you like, please, what can be fun? What, can, what, where can we just choose it? And, um, and it matters. Like it's, it's that sort of a life outlook that I also kind of carry with me. Um, I always say, I'm just, I kind of walk around this dumb world and I expect to be delighted. And thus I am because you, you kind of find what you're looking for. You kind of do. If you are looking for fear mongering and if you are looking for drama and disaster and catastrophe, I swear to God, you'll find it constantly. Um, but if, yeah, you if you are, you have an idea of what it's supposed to be, it's going to find you and, and something's going to reinforce yeah. your narrative in your head Yeah. as soon as you want it to. I agree. And I love that you enjoyed the writing. Pro writing is a processing tool for me too. Um, I have this little sign that I keep on my desk. It's by a, um, like kind of a, a, a deep thinker, um, like almost a theologian. His name was Henry Nowen, but he said something like, I do not yet know what I carry in my heart, but I trust it will emerge as I write. And I have found that to be true as a writer that sometimes I think I know where I'm going, but in the process of mining it out of my own brain and memories, I discover all kinds of stuff there that I'd either forgotten or I didn't even know I felt. Yeah. Um, and so a lot or of times writing. Go. Or yeah, that you've exactly. let go. And yeah, which is wonderful to discover. Like yeah, it's 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 a good reminder that there's been trauma or there's been difficulties that were that were just like so painful for yeah. you in that moment, especially like breakups and, sure. and life changes. 
they were so traumatic. They were so like jarring and, and visceral. But now you look back on it and you're like, oh, like that doesn't even matter anymore. And it reminds you that the things that you get into the present, you don't need to take so seriously or that you or that through the process, you will let it go at some point. You're right. One of my favorite Cody-isms is um, get your life together, which makes me laugh out loud. <laughs> I just, I just love it. Get, just do it. So um, I'd like to, I'd like to hear you talk on that just a minute and how there is a place for like tactful pettiness. You know, <laughs> there's just a place for it. Like, <laughs> get your life together. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, get, get your life together is just kind of a reminder that like when you've fallen or you're overwhelmed to like just scramp up and get your energy and figure it out in that moment. Like, <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. Don't, don't look for, don't look for a way to stay down. Like get it together, figure it out. Like, come on, pull up queen. Let's go. Like we got, we got bigger things to do and we have more joy to feel. So like, figure it out. Let's go. And, you know, <laughs> tactful pettiness is, is part of the, as part of my book title, XOXO Cody. Um, we, we talk about that in there and um, it, it really is about, for me, I'm like a brash person. Like I'm going to tell it, tell you like it is, yeah. but I'm going to do it with, with always from a place of love yeah. And even if you do me wrong, mm. and even if you are someone who's not cheering for me and you do me wrong, like I'm going to be petty, but I'm going to do it in the most loving and lifted <laughs> way possible. Yeah. You know, you, 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 I feel like when, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, that quote that the, your best, the best revenge is like your happiness and yeah. like, you don't need to worry about getting anybody back. Yeah. Like, you're going to thrive and you're going to succeed no matter what. Mm. And let them look, let them look back and be like, Oh, did that just happen? Yeah. You know? Yes, totally. I've, it's taken me a long time to learn that um, because so much of my life at this point is located online. And so <laughs> that's just a, it's the devil's playground. You know what I mean? Oh like gosh. everybody will say anything and do anything on there. It's just like, it's just the wild west in terms of yeah. like human engagement. And so I've had to learn to be like, your thing about me, this does not affect me. I, this will not touch. Me. I'm not going to wear this. Um, this does not affect my life. This is not true. Um, and so you can have it, take it over to your yard and it, you can have it over there, but it does not get to stay in mine. It, it, well, it's also like, I am too busy and too yeah. cute to um, <laughs> yeah. be attacking people in, in comment sections and like, yeah fighting there you know yeah. like what, what are y'all wasting your time on there's so yeah. many other things you could be doing totally totally i completely agree um i used to back to that idea of justice i have this really strong internal sense of justice and so i used to feel like absolutely not i will defend myself against this i will not let this like stand in writing here yeah, and i'm yeah, like yeah. wait a minute what am i doing what am i doing um, we don't negotiate with terrorists like yeah. no Very good. Yeah. Not. like that is a that is a block and goodbye like yeah. I at some point release myself from this responsibility to engage yeah. when there's like no good faith engagement of possible. So it's a better life to let these things Absolutely. roll. It's a better life. Um, uh, let's do a couple of hot takes before we go. Oh, okay. You're a hot take guy. You're I am. Great, I a, great I'm, jelly. I'm, I'm an opinionated homosexual. So <laughs> by the way, I am a hundred percent with you on grape jelly. Ew. In every way, flavor, the goopiness of it, the glop, the glop. There's, it's not real. It's not. It's not real. It's it's gross. It's nasty. Okay. It, it's not hitting. No. Yeah. No, it isn't. Okay. Um, so let's let's hear let's hear your thoughts on this. Um, what's what's the tip top criteria for you, or even choice, when you're curating like a fire playlist? What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. For me, it's just like, I love a theme. Like I love, mm. I want someone to feel yeah. as if they clicked on a song on, you know, if you go to Spotify and you like yeah. click a song and then you go to like song radio, like yeah. I want it to feel like you just clicked on song radio and all yeah. of the songs like really make sense together, even if they're in like a, 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 a weird kind of way. Yeah. Um, Cause I think, 
our brains think that way in like creativity, but I also feel like we love nostalgia and things that make us feel comfortable. I just did a <laughs> 20 minute Disney ride, but instead of doing like the animated ones, I did yeah. like Disney Channel. So we had like Lizzie McGuire oh, and Hannah Montana. And I Word. feel like all of those things have such a visceral reaction and they're attached to nostalgia. So, and, and <laughs> if you can like get through a 20 minute ride and like, love that playlist like yeah. I'm with you because you're not taking life so seriously That's you're like right. oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a silly goose and I'm gonna really live my <laughs> life unabashedly right. you know it's like unapologetically I think I could sing Hannah Montana by heart right this very second there you go um, I didn't even, I didn't even like watch Hannah Montana that much but she had so many hit hits on the radio that I was like oh yeah we're going there let's go what are three things we should never put on our body clothing or otherwise Ooh. Mm -hmm. What are just absolutely not mediocre men. So those should not be on our body <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> That's one. That's one. <laughs> um, I always say this, a kitten heel. If you're going to wear a kitten heel, just wear a flat. Yeah. Give yeah. me a heel or yeah. give me a wedge. But yeah. a kitten heel, what are we doing with this half Thanks. of an inch? Like, I, I listen, I listen, I understand people's ankles aren't as strong as we get older, but like, just for flats. Me, That's just right. Give me, just give me a flat. And uh -huh. then, yeah, you know, I don't know if there's a lot of straight men that listen to your podcast, but, uh -huh. we, and we've already, we've already like dug at them in, uh -huh. but um, we shouldn't be putting body lotion on our face. Can oh. we just buy a moisturizer? Can we Thanks. just get a, a simple? That's right. You, you can can we just go to Kiehl's and like get something meant for like even. face skin? You can, go down to, you can go to Target and find a simple, yeah. a simple moisturizer, <laughs> one for the night and one with SPF at, at the day. Uh -huh. Okay. That's just, right. that's right. what I'm asking. That's all I right. need. Right. Not this like heavy duty leg cream, like no. on our faces. No. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for like leading the people. <laughs> um, if we're going to do one thing today, what should it be? Get laid. No, that's not bad. If we can, if we can. If we can. If, if it's in can. the cards. If it's in the cards. Otherwise, <laughs> um, take a 20-minute power nap. Oh, I love a nap. Just, you don't even have to, like, think about falling asleep. Like, turn off your, or get off your phone, find a space. I know with some of y'all with kids, it's hard. But, like, go hide in a corner and set, and, like, close your eyes and lay down and set your t alarm for 20 yeah. minutes. And, like, it will re-energize you. <laughs> um okay how about this what do you think is the number one pop culture thing we should be paying attention to right now what are you loving oh that you know for someone who loves pop culture sometimes i'm not so into the into the current uh -huh. guys uh -huh. um i feel li like the whole vanderpump rules thing i have like no idea what's going on there like it, mm -hmm. it goes completely uh -huh. over my head uh -huh. I have right no idea 100 percent same Sometimes you know, when I'm in the grocery like, store and I read like the titles on the magazines, yeah, I'm like, I sure. literally do not know who these people are. I literally don't know what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. Um, I mean, How about bring it, bring, let's bring it into this. What show should we be watching right now? What like, like, do you have a show where you're like, this is it. This is, I'm binging. I'm, this is queued up and ready to go. I feel like I just, oh, oh my God. You know what? It's like kind of. I thought I was going to hate it, okay. but um, there's a show on Netflix called Glamorous and I thought I was going to hate it because yeah. sometimes Netflix shows become very CW and like low budget. <laughs> totally. Uh, um, but this one was so good. Um, it has Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City yeah. and she like plays this makeup mo mogul and then it has like a lot of queer representation in it, but the, the writing is like really funny. And yeah. I, 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 we, we were just on, we were on Fire Island after 4th of July, kind of like vegging out, uh, me and my friends. And we like, we binged the whole season in <laughs> a day. Like we, it, I, I was it. like, wow, this is really good. I was like, I don't, why do I like this? And I shouldn't, but it was uh -huh. good. So I okay. enjoyed it. I noted. Um, sometimes we just need a show like that. Yeah. Like just do. It's Easy. summer. Easy, cheesy, fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I could not agree more. Um, it's why. About the same time we were all meeting you during the pandemic, we were all also watching Ted Lasso because we're yeah. like, we need something happy in our dumb, sad lives right now. Enter Cody and Ted Lasso. The, um, and, and Tiger King. You know, we need a little. We need a little. <laughs> thank we, you. We need a little side of yeah. trash in there. We need just oh, a little God. trash. 
I watched it all. I'm sorry to tell of you. Of course. Yeah, every bit of Hello, it. Oh, that was such a glorious mess. Um, okay, La let's let, let's wrap it here. What are you working on? What are you? What's next? What's coming? What are you like? I mean, obviously, your book's about to come out. That's a big deal because then it's like book release season is a whole thing. It is oh, just. Yeah. A, I mean, it is. Um, it is a lift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, most importantly, right now, it is it is my it is my book, XOXO Cody, an opinionated homosexuals guide to self love, relationships, and tactful pettiness. We got to get so the funny. whole title out there. We got to do the oh, we got to do the shameless title. plug. Yeah. So, obviously, we're gonna work on a book tour and a press tour for that. So, I'm yeah. super excited about that at yeah. the end of summer. Um, yeah. beyond that, you know, I love being at Peloton, so we're going to be, you know, still riding and thriving. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully working on a, on a TV show, like a game show for format that would be Ooh. fun to see if that comes to fruition, but working with a production company there. So that's really fun. Like and as the host. Yeah. You know, I love this. Fun. Yeah. Um, oh, you'd be good at that. And then, you know, for me. I, I hate to put I, I I not hate but I I try to limit the my what's next to just career success right um I think that the older I get I recognize I need more time for joy and happiness and um I think that's what's most importantly important for me is like yeah. learning learning where I can say no no man while still thriving success like um professionally but also where yeah. i can say no and make a lot more time for myself yeah. my relationship my friendships my mom and really nourishing and, and, and finding time to connect mm -hmm. so that's kind of what i have my eyes set on for the next six to 12 months you know i love to hear you say that um someone like you with your personality with your charisma with your interesting like skill set and you're like special gifts in the world, people will take from you literally as much as you will give with no boundaries, with no restraint. Mm -hmm. They don't mean to, but they will. And so the only person that will ever protect you in this world is yourself. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, you keep saying yes, because it's all new and exciting and you want to, and you know, it's you, all good. You, it's all good. And you know, and, yeah. you, and I think for me, it's like, I don't know if it's going to end. I always have this fear that at some point yeah. it's going to end. So I need to take it all right now, but. But that's not really true. I don't think a lot. So far, so good, yeah. you know? So far, so good. I don't believe in scarcity. I really don't. And I, I just, when you're creating the kind of magic that you do, um, it, you're going to keep falling uphill. And so it's exciting. I'm so excited for your book. Your like devoted fans are going to gobble it down just right. gobble it down. I hope it is a wild success um, so and that you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the, just don't, don't get too bound up in the whole thing. Cause everybody is yeah. like, Oh, Very is nice. it going to be the best? And is it going to be the lit and the list and the just enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah. putting it out into the world. And I can only control what I can control. That's exactly right. And so let that ride be fun. And uh, what will happen will happen. And there's nothing you can yep. do about it. So you've done your part which is yep. get those words on paper. You told yep. the truth. Yep. Um, you brought yourself to bear to the project. Your, th your work here is finished. So right. good for you. Good for you. Thanks for being on today. Um, Thanks, I am just so absolutely happy to be. Oh my God, I have one last question. I almost forgot. Yes. I ask everybody this. Um, you charmed me and you let, I got out of my brain. Check Everybody check. gets this question. Please answer this however you want. Like it could be, no. you can give an earnest, like sincere thing. You could give like a, a absurdity. I, I like no. it all. Um, the question is what is saving your life right now? <gasps> what is saving my life right now? Uh -huh. This is a good question. Wow. Mm. Um, I'm just such a summer girly and I going back to that theme of saying no, like this is my season of saying no. Like yeah. I know I have a lot coming up, but if yep. I don't say no right now, I'm not going to be ready to give my hundred percent when I go. So I'm saying no to like responsibilities, but yes to 
dancing and staying up late and yeah. being a hot mess and <laughs> having time on the beach with my friends and right. dressing cute and going to dinners and having cocktails. And that's what I'm saying yes to. Oh, is dreamy. That. dreamy. So that's my life is enjoying life because this is my season to do so. It sure is. And that'll put all the gas in the tank you need mm -hmm. for what's next. That's yes. a good choice. Hey, thank you for being on today. I am just Absolutely. delighted to have met you and cheering for yes. you in every possible way. Like I'm thrilled to see you succeed and is excited. I'm just excited to keep watching you go. So thanks for being on today. Thanks, boo. Bye.